Okay, today we're going to be talking some, about something a little bit more advanced than 3D Builder. Um, it's really not that complicated, though. So if you follow along step by step, you'll see that it's actually quite easy to do. And what we're trying to do is take a figure like this one on the left, which I love the sculpt. It, it, it caught my eye, and I wanted to print up this gunslinger. Um, for some reason, I'm into fantasy gunslingers all of a sudden. But I was looking at the model, and I thought to myself, man, I wish... Uh, the artist had made a couple little changes. Like, I wish the gun barrels were hollow. I wish there was some... I wish this guy was loaded with bullets somewhere. Um, uh, you know, I wish his trigger finger, you know, came through the trigger guard and I could paint it so it would look a little more realistic. So I had a couple of thoughts looking at this model. I mean, like I said, I love the model already. I printed up, painted it. It's going to look great. But I thought one of the beauties of 3D printing is that you can customize stuff. And even though I have no artistic skill at all, and I'm not even that familiar with some of these programs I'm using. I, I just worked my way through it and said, listen, uh, it's my figure now. It's, it's my world. I'm going to make this thing, to the best of my ability, look the, exactly the way I want it to look. So there are a couple little touches that I wanted to make to this model. And you can see uh, by looking at the figure on the right, I, I made those changes. So I'm going to walk you through in this video exactly how to do that. The video is a little long. Uh, so it doesn't get tedious. I'll try to keep the chatter up. I might, you know, divulge the meaning of life somewhere in that video, so pay attention. So hopefully you'll enjoy the video and you will learn how to do this, um, you know, fairly proficiently. So let's jump right into it. So what I've loaded in so far into 3D Builder is my finished model, again, just for reference. The original model, which uh, has face planted into the program because that's how it loads in, um, which is fine. And I also loaded in a free bullet model off of Thingiverse. And you can see the thing is, I don't know, it looks just a little too big to be uh, hanging off his belt or going in his gun. But I'm going to show you how to fix all that, of course. So you can see the finished product looks pretty good. I mean, the original sculpt, like I said, is great, beautiful. But here I, I show you I want to hollow the gun barrel. I want to add those bullets on the belt. I want to hollow the other gun barrel as well which I did. And also I wanted to add fingertip coming through the trigger guard so that it would look more realistic. So you can see in the final model, I've done all of those things and I'm going to show you how to do every single one of them. And like I said, none of them are really, really that complicated. Let's pan around the back of the model. All I did on the back was I, you know, cause the back's pretty detailed. It's nice, but it also had this belt with nothing on it. So I added bullets on the back there. Okay. So it's, which is the same as adding bullets on the front. So it is possible, you know, after you see me add the bullets to the front, you might need, you might be able to skip the part about bullets being added to the back since it's the same thing. If you've got nothing better to do, you can watch me do it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, this guy I'm showing you that, you know, how I could scale him if I want to change all the scaling and stuff. But what I'm really going to do with him is I'm going to get rid of him get him out of here so that we can we can actually start working on this model but what I did uh, is I did make him a little wider and a little thicker so I didn't change the Z but I changed the X and the Y because the the model to me also looked a little too thin so that's why this final version looks a little thicker than this other guy um, but I'll show you how to do that as well now I do that at the very end not at the beginning so that uh, you know all the stuff I add to him uh, scales as well so we're going to get into it here, um, and I'm going to show you now how I did this. So the first thing we're going to do, right, is we need to, we might as well get rid of the model um, that I already did because we don't need it. Okay. I'm going to click on the gunslinger with a left click. Okay. Oh, one of our objects at the bottom you see here. Uh, need to be repaired. When you get this message in 3D Builder, I usually, even though it no, looks like nothing's wrong and maybe nothing's wrong, I click repair, which it's doing right now. Sometimes it takes two or three minutes to repair a model. Sometimes it's 10 seconds. This one goes, you know, relatively quickly. It's about 10, 15 seconds, I guess. So I'm not sure what this is really doing, to be honest, but I, whenever it says it, an object needs to be repaired, I repair it because it doesn't seem to hurt anything. So I guess it can only help. So once that's done, I'm going to click on the model. I'm going to go to the rotate button. I'm going to pop him up 90 degrees on the roll so he stands up. And then I'm going to go 180 degrees on the yaw so he turns around and faces me. 
which I could do by clicking and dragging or just type in 180 is easier. Now he, you see is below the plate. So if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I love to settle objects in this program. So I will settle him so his feet are perfectly uh, on the ground, the base plate here. And then I always click confirm, which is the check mark, which says settle. Done. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do, well, we look at this bullet. Let me move it over. You can see, as I said, it's a little too big to attach to the belt, right? So we're going to be shrinking that down to the appropriate size. And But first, before I do that, let's actually hollow out this gun barrel because that's annoying me just looking at that. So what I want to do, I want to go to insert, okay? Because what I'm going to do is a two-part technique. So first, I'm going to insert a cylinder because luckily this is a cylindrical shape that's easy that's again like the bullet it's a little on the big side so let's shrink that down let's just try uh, one millimeter I lock the scale so the whole thing will shrink proportionally okay that looks about right maybe it's a little small like I'll resize it if I need to just let me move it into position okay once I get it by the gun barrel I obviously want to orient this object the same orientation as the gun barrel so it fits inside the gun barrel because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shape into the gun barrel and then subtract it from the gun barrel so first let me let me get the tilt going and I'm just eyeballing it to try to make it tilt kind of the way the gun's tilting okay and you just eyeball it till it looks good uh, changing angles on the camera you know can help you see if you're eyeballing it correctly sometimes it looks right from one angle you go to another angle and you realize it's horribly wrong so now I'm sinking it into the model now when I move this down to sink it in because the model itself is not perfectly vertical it does change the location of that cylinder and I have to adjust you know the forward and backwards as well left and right so now I've increased the size because the hole in that gun barrel should have been bigger so now I'm trying to position it I'm gonna rotate it I'm trying to get it so it's really on the exact same plane as the gun itself. So now I'm changing the angle. I see, okay, now it looks, eh, I got that, I think, decent. Good, you know, it's good enough. We're talking about microns here. So, you know, as soon as it looks, you know, 95% good, it's more than good enough already. So now I just need to keep moving it until I feel it's dead center of the gun barrel. I'm going to drop it down, see it changes the location. I have to push it again. So I have to push it back and to the side to get it back to the same general location it was. So the left side seems to be more sunken in. I mean the right side. So that means my angle's off. So as I drop this in, I'm going to have to change the angle. So you see it's now it's, it looks pretty well positioned here, but that side's lower. So let me change that angle and try to balance it. That means I have my uh, cylinder that's inside the gun cylinder, inside the gun barrel. It really kind of parallel to it. It's not quite perfect now, but it's pretty close. And in this, close is actually good enough because with the human eye, you, you'll never be able to tell if it's off by a, you know, a little bit. So I'm just trying to, but I am trying to get it as dead center as I can because, uh, you know, I am a bit of a perfectionist. So I want to, I really do want to look as good as it can. So now it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually uh, go and test this out. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to what I want to do is subtract that cylinder from the gun barrel. So I'm going to go to edit, and there's a button that says subtract, which is handy. When I hit subtract, it subtracts the cylinder shape from the rest of the model. So let's test it out because we, we can always go back. So I click it. It says wait, and boom, look, my gun cylinder is hollowed out. And that's, that's more than deep enough for a model like this. I don't need to go deeper. Perfect. Now I'm going to undo it because I know it works. So I just want to show you that. Now what I'm going to do is since I have another gun barrel to do, and I don't want to recreate the wheel. I think they're the same size. I'm going to clone this cylinder. So I select it. I go back to Object, Duplicate. Now I'm going to use this one as stick in the other gun. So now that I've done that, I can now go back and subtract my first cylinder from the gun barrel again. And kind of, you know, I'm done with that. So that's kind of going to be permanent after I do it this time. So I highlight it. I go back to Edit. I go back to Subtract. And boom. The gun is now hollowed out. Looks perfect. So now all I have to do is stick this cylinder into this gun barrel, the same way I did the first one, and reorient it, obviously, so it's uh, 
running parallel to the gun barrel inside it and hollows it out perfectly. Here, now here, I'm doing something stupid. I sunk it in a little too deep and I start, I figured I could just orient it perfectly and just see it, but you know what? That ain't happening. So I fidget a little bit here, but let me drop this back outside where I can see it a little better instead of being dumb. Um, and it'll be a lot easier to work with and easier for you guys to see as well. So let me drop it out. Now I see I wasn't even close and time to do it the right way. So I'm just going to keep playing with the orientation until I feel that it's right. I'm going to move it into position as best I can. And sink it into the model. And look, see my view is off. So in, th in three dimensions, it's hard because you're working a three-dimensional model in two dimensions. So now I've got it basically in place. Now I need to just start rotating it, make sure it, it you know, it's really parallel. So I, you know, that's kind of easy to just eyeball. And then once I have this perfectly in place, it's good to look at it from a couple of different angles as well, right? I'm, I'm just messing around with it here to try to make sure that it that it's you know balanced in there, that it's really parallel. Now I look at it from this angle, I say, you know what? I need to move this a little bit more. It's not perfectly centered. Now this is on the underside of the model. You might never even really see this, but I still want it to be in the right spot. So now it looks pretty good. Again, with the naked eye, you'll never be able to tell if it's off by a micron or two. So let me look at here. I, yep, you know what? The tilt is wrong. Let me make sure it's just more parallel. There we go. That's starting to look, you know, pretty good. So I think that <sighs> changed the angle. Now looks really good to me. So I think we're ready to uh, subtract this one out. And then our guns will be done already. So, yeah, it took, you know, maybe 10 minutes. Well, I'm going a little slower because I want to, you know, show you guys and do instruction. But it's not a long process, as you can see. So, I'm going to actually flip him over because it's easier to see if I angle him. I can now double check, make sure that the, the barrel, that I have it placed right in the barrel, which I, I really think it looks pretty good to me. So, I think we're ready to basically subtract this now. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, subtract it. Okay, select it, subtract it, and now boom, that is looking really nice actually. So now it's easy for me to insert muzzle flash effects if I 3D print those, which I do, or just to have a really cool, realistic looking gun barrel. So let me stand him back up at 90. And when I do that, as always, I go back and settle to make sure he's on the plate. There he is. Okay. Now, next up, uh, after I've done this, and again, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks already. This is looking good. Now, I could hollow out these holsters, uh, but if I just paint them black, I actually think that they'll look hollowed out. You know, maybe I'll do it later in the video anyway, but for now... Uh, you know, that, I didn't set out to hollow the holsters, but now that I'm looking at it, the more I look at it, probably the more I'm going to end up wanting to do it later. So, which would be much the same process as doing the guns, but I'll, I'll do it step by step anyway, just so you can see for sure. So now let's talk about this bullet, this huge ass bullet. And let's take it down a couple notches here. Let's just try out um, two millimeters. See how it looks. When I made my first figure, I think I put six bullets on the belt. And this time, I'm actually going to put five. I actually want a little more space between them because these things are so damn tiny that I really want them to stand out and look distinct. I don't want them to look like a mush. So once I shrink the bullet, and I do think that size is right. Now I'm just going to keep going back and forth positioning it because I want just touching the model. And you have to decide how much of the bullet you want sticking up. Little details like that are personal, so you'll decide what looks good to you. And you see as the belt moves, it actually curves and angles, which presents just a little bit of problem in that I, I need to angle my bullet. You, so I'm just trying to eyeball it and make sure that the vertical line on the bullet is forming a right angle with the horizontal lines on the belt. Now I want to make sure it's, it's merged to the model, but mostly sticking out, so it prints out nice and distinct. 
And let's make it even a little bigger because I want these bullets, you know, these are so tiny. I really want to be able to see it. And, and those gun barrels are pretty big, so it could handle a bigger bullet. So I'm just, I'm just really, I'm going to make it, well, not, not that wide. Okay. So it didn't take my point when I typed that in, so let's redo that. Uh, and like I said, just a little bigger. You'll notice a slight change here. And then let's make this a little bigger. See, I decoupled the, again, it wouldn't take my point. I decoupled the lock button because I don't want it to get taller. I just want it to be a little fatter so that I can, uh, it's more 3D off the model. So it's very slight changes, but, you know, in the end, every little change does add up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this, move it off the model a little more. So, again, I want it to be very distinct. Okay. And I think it doesn't look bad there. I'll move it out a little more now. There we go. That's just into the model. I think that is going to give us the maximum effect when we print it and when we go to paint it. So since the, mod, the belt, as I said, angles up and also curves from front to back, I'm going to need to place each bullet in a separate spot, you know, kind of carefully. Um, so I hit duplicate on the bullet. Now I'm just going to start maneuvering into position. And again, movement in the three dimensions is a little bit of a hassle just because because of the shape of the model when i move it back it intersects a different part of the model and then i have to also move it maybe a little bit up maybe a little bit uh forward and backwards in the horizontal plane to make it to make it fit where it needs to be first let's rotate it because the belt's starting to bend here already first bullet is well placed but this one needed you know just a tiny little bit change in the angle so it looks like it's actually you know straight on the belt and the belt is bent therefore the belt bullets a little bent so i look at it from a little further away get some perspective come back in so now i'm just going to keep fiddling with it you know till it looks good and i'm going to make sure it's not too deeply embedded in the belt just like the first bullet okay so now when i'm pulling it out it's also effectively moving the bolt to the right a little bit so i'm gonna have to keep doing a little uh, playing with a little micro adjustments here i want the angle i want to make sure the the bullet is not angled one part deeper into the belt than the other because then, then it wouldn't be sitting on the belt properly. Uh, it would look a little weird. So I'm just going to keep playing with the angles. So the angle looks right, and then I'm going to keep going. So here's the part of the video, since I'm placing bullet after bullet, where you say, Greg, you're boring the shit out of me right now. Okay, because you already saw what I did, and now I'm just doing it again. So what I will say is, as you're looking at this, start thinking about models that you have, 3D models that you have, that you really like, but you've looked at and said, man, if the artist did this, if the artist did that, the model would look a little better. So now that you have a sense of what you can do in 3D Builder and do very easily, and again, with no sculpting talent, no artistic talent, and, and even minimal knowledge of the program itself, uh, you can start thinking about models and how to improve them, how to customize them. I'm going to make another video which is going to show you what to do with a base. And it's basically the same concept, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to add, you know, a familiar to your base, how to add skulls, how to add whatever you want to add. Customize those bases before you print them out instead of having to go the hassle of, of you know, making a base afterwards. I used to custom make all my bases for my figures. It's a lot of work. But if you could 3D print all those customized items, basically, uh, it's a beautiful thing. That's why 3D printing is such an amazing process and gives us so much control over the final product like this. And, you know, if I had liked this figure a year ago, I would have bought it in the store and it would have come how it come. And I never would have been able to add bullets to the belt. I, I would have to use my mini pin vise drill to drill out the gun barrels and pray to God that I don't break them in the process, right? Now I can do all the little touches that I want. And worst case comes to worst, if I print this out and something doesn't work, I screwed something up, I can just reprint it, uh, you know, for a few cents. Who cares? So 3D printing has just opened up this world where it allows, you know, schmucks like me to alter models done by great artists and and actually in my mind i am improving this model i'm making it better so now it's become almost a collaborative effort and i get the figure that i want you know as much the way i want it as you can 
which I, I think is just an incredible, incredible time we're in that we can even do this. So I've got four bullets on, and here comes number five. Then we're going to go to the back, and we're going to add uh, five or six bullets back there the exact same way. So if this part, if I am now boring the shit out of you, or if you fell asleep and you just woke up, you might want to skip ahead, scroll ahead, because I have decided I am going to hollow out those gun holsters. So you can look for that. And then I'm also going to be adding fingertips through the um, trigger guard. So you might want to kind of like scroll ahead till you see me doing that, just so you understand exactly how to do that. Uh, because I think you've got about another five minutes of really boring shots of me clicking around. And yeah, I know I should find a way to speed up the video. Uh, I'll have to figure that out so I can have you skip by the boring shit. And wait, am I allowed to curse on YouTube or should I take that back? Maybe I should. Maybe I need to also learn how to bleep out my own language sometimes. So anyway, I, like I said, if you're getting bored, skip ahead. If not, the other things that I can talk to you about now um, while we're while we're going through the this somewhat boring stage of, of bullet placement is I will also be making some videos in the future, like I said, about altering bases, but I'll just do a couple more videos like this of altering specific figures, just so you know people can get here. I duplicate the bullet and then dragged it behind the model so it make it easier. Now I can start placing and then duplicating and placing again. So I will also just make some videos where you can, guys can get some ideas like because some people might look at a model and not think, oh, add bullets to the belt. So I'll, I'll just do a couple models like this. Uh, I'll find a way to speed up the boring stuff, like I said, and just give you guys some ideas on how you can customize models just to make them you know, better, but really simple customizations like this where you don't really need to know that much and you don't have to have like real artistic sense or anything like that. So, you know what? I'm actually boring myself right now. That's how bad it is. We're <laughs> watching these bullets go on. Um, there's really no more instruction I can give you on, on this stuff right now. You, you've seen what it is. So you're going to have to bear with me as we, uh, as we put these damn bullets on. Oh, one of the things I'm going to do for this one afterwards, which I'm also going to do in 3D Builder, so it'll be a very, very short video and not as boring as this part. I'm going to show you how to make bullet casings because I want this gunslinger to have bullets on his belt, spend shells all around his feet. Now, now look, all of us who have done wargaming before modeling, you know, a lot of us have made bullet shells. There's a lot of easy ways to do it. But isn't it better to just 3D print it and have them come out like perfectly the way you want instead of, you know, some home crafted way where it looks okay, but they're really not going to be as good as what we can do 3D printing. So uh, that'll be a nice little video where I'd show you how to make the uh, shell casings. And, and that, of course, will work for obviously any figure that has guns because I'm going to show you how to make all different sizes and, and, you know, just really easy formula for how to do it. Okay, so now I guess I should discuss the meaning of life because I said if things got too boring, I would. So I, I really hate to tell you guys this, but the human brain, uh, we're not smart enough to conceive of certain things. Like you can't conceive of your own death, of your perception ending, because when you're perceiving something, you are perceiving. So perceive of yourself not perceiving is impossible. So likewise, I think the meaning of life is beyond basically the scope of the human brain. So what I'm saying is if there was some grand purpose to life, I don't think we could even comprehend it. So if an alien came down and was able to tell you what's beyond the edge of the universe or exactly what happens when you die, I don't think our brains could comprehend it at all. So to me, it's like if you have a dog or a really stupid friend and you try to explain that the earth goes around the sun, no matter how you explain it to your dog, your dog doesn't get it. Your dog will never understand it. And I think that's how the human brain is with a lot of things. All the things that are beyond our understanding, you know, how time functions, what's at the edge of the universe. If the Big Bang started the universe and comprised all the matter in the universe, what was, quote unquote, you know, like outside that marble of matter or what's outside the edge of the universe? Those questions, our brains are too puny. And I have a big brain, but our brain's too puny to understand stuff like that. So I would give you the meaning of life except you wouldn't understand it. And of course, I don't understand either, so I can't really give it to you. Anyway, I think it's just have as much fun as you can. Be as nice to people as you can. 
help people when you can. Combat your human selfishness, which we have all, all have in us. Try to combat your selfishness when you can to uh, be good to other people. Beyond that, I don't, I don't really think there's anything else, like I said, at least that's within our comprehension. So just try to live as good a life as you can, be as happy as you can. And did you know you were getting a philosophy lesson when you came to see how to alter a figure? Okay, so this has taught me I really, really, really need to learn how to speed up the video. And you know, if I did this part at 10 times speed, you wouldn't have to listen to my BS. So apologies for that. <laughs> hey, maybe you learned something about life also. I don't know. Or the limitations of the human brain. So, God, we got three bullets, uh, three bullets down. I think I only did five. So hopefully this will be mercifully quicker. It's like watching water drip out of a faucet here. Um, sorry, I couldn't do it quicker than this. But uh, at the time when I was doing this, I'm thinking... I don't want to go too fast because I want people to learn, not realizing you just watched eight other bullets. You don't really need to see the ninth one that badly. <sighs> but I'm getting the hang of this. I'm new at this. I'm still getting the hang. So, again, apologies. The good thing is you can skip past this stuff. So, And now that I think about it in the description, I'm going to mention that you might want to skip uh, a couple minutes of the bullet placement here. Unless, again, if you're using my voice to fall asleep, you know, at night, that's fine. Play it, fall asleep. I'm all for it. And here, what I'm actually doing, I, let me instruct right here in case anyone's actually listening. Here, instead of drag, when sometimes you drag the bullet, it drags in increments of, say, something like, say, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeters. And I need a finer increment than that. When that happens, I actually go and, man as you saw, I manually type in a value to just move it, say, 0 0.1 millimeter, 0 0.2 millimeters, or even less than that, so that I can really get something this small, I want to place it kind of exactly. Now, the reason I'm only going to do five bullets back here instead of six because the other belt is starting to drop down, and I don't want it to get in the way of the bullet and clog things up and possibly bond and look mushy. So that's one of the reasons I didn't... Originally, when I did this model, I put a six bullet by the bag, but I don't want to. And I noticed this one I think I could correct a little bit while I'm here. So I, I didn't put a sixth bullet because it was getting too close and even touching the bag over there. So I'm only going to do five bullets in the back as well because to me that seems to uh, make a lot more sense. I don't, I, don't, I don't want this stuff to be clogged up. Now I'm trying to make the bullet tips. See here, the jump is too much, so I'm going to go in an increment. And that looks about perfect to me. Small increments because these are really small things. Now it's looking pretty good. Now, once I've got my bullets in place, what I'm doing is I'm going to select all. Okay. Once everything is selected, I'm going to hit merge, join objects. Boom. Now it's one model. Bullets are there. Everything's there. Okay just part of the model now which is great so now if I move the model around tilt to do anything the bullets are gonna be in place if you make a mistake and move the model or move something and everything's not attached just go and click that back button and uh, everything will be back attached and then you can you can adjust whatever you need to do so now I dropped in a another huge s cylinder let me scale this puppy down So I do want to hollow out those gun holsters. So let me drag this over. And I'm looking at the gun holster. That is not a cylindrical shape, obviously. But you're limited to what you can drag and drop in. So I'll show you what to do with this. So let me try to get the angle. Drop it in. Now, because it's not the right shape, the best I can do is try to do approximate the shape. So... Once I get it in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the proportions. Okay, so I'm going to unlock the proportions because if I change it while it's locked, it changes everything, which I don't want the circle to be bigger like this, right? What I want is unlock. And I'm just going to change the, uh, the length of it, basically, to make it oblong. 
If I make it oblong, it kind of fits in the, in the hole pretty nicely. And I make it a little narrower because it was it was touching the sides of the holster, which I didn't want. So let me sink it in, see how it looks. Get the tilt right so I can make sure my angle's right. No, that's too much. There we go. That angle looks pretty good right now. So this isn't going to be perfect, and I don't really care because, again, we're talking microns here. The fact that it if I sink this in at all, it's just going to look better than it did before. So let me duplicate that for the other holster. Then let me uh, go to my Edit, Subtract. Now I've got a holster that's hollowed out. Now it's not perfect, and there's a little space in the back. You know what? Maybe I'll... You know, let's get rid of, let, let's, let's do another little, a little trick here to, 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 uh, hollow it out a little further. So even though I think that would look great just for fun, not that it's really fun, but <laughs> to show you guys, let me insert a circle, a sphere, shrink it down with it locked, of course. And now I'm going to drag it into place. I'm going to drag it just over the area that's, that didn't get hollowed out a little bit and just. Just get rid of a little bit of it just, just to show you what you can do. So I'm just going to drag it to that little back spot that... Like this. Okay. When I get in position, I just say, you know what? That's, that's more than good enough. Again, we're talking microns. I just want to show you, you know, what you can do here. So once I do this and you paint it, it's really going to look like the whole thing is hollow. I think it's going to look real good. So I'm going to duplicate it and pull that ball out in case I need it on the other side. Then I'm going to go click my original ball. I'm going to subtract it out now. And you see it, it gives me a little bit of a hollow that's closer to the actual shape of the holster. I could do another one over there, but I'm, I'm not going to bother right now. You get the idea. After watching 10 bullets, you don't need me to watch, watch me do this a few times. Okay, I'm going to do it anyway. I, I tricked you. I am going to do it. I'm going to make you watch it. So I can't help it. I'm a perfectionist. I want, it, I want to get it out of there. So I'm going to get rid of a little more. And again, once I paint this all black to, to represent the hollow part, you won't be able to see any of this. It's just going to look really good. Okay, so now let's go over here. We've got a head start because we've already got the shape we need. Just change the angle. Okay, you just eyeball it, send it into place. Okay, once I get into place, again, double check that angle. I'm going to subtract it out once I get this angle right. Takes a little bit of fiddling, as you can see, because as you drop it down, you change the location a little bit. So, again, because the model's not strictly uh, vertical, it's angled itself. So, and you're dropping things on straight lines. So, let me just change the angle till I feel like it's kind of perfect. I think that's more than good enough for something this size, which you literally with the naked eye won't be able to see very well. And then I'm going to go and subtract it. And looking at this, I don't even think I need to put the ball. This this holster is a little different in how much of you can view and the shape. So I'm just going to leave it like that. What I'm going to use this ball for then, and this, this, this happens to be the right size already, I think. I'm going to use it for the fingertip, which should be coming through around that trigger. So you see there's like a little trigger it looks like indicated. So let me use this for the finger, fingertip. So since I don't, the fingertip's not a ball, obviously, I'm going to push it halfway through the model. And that way it'll look like a fingertip popping out. Pretty simple. So you do a fingertip without having any sculpting or artistic ability because you have a ball. So now it's not lined up with the finger. Let me get it a lot closer to where I think that finger would come out. Now when I paint it, I have a physical 3D projection to paint. That fingertip's going to look like a fingertip. Otherwise, I would have to paint a flesh-colored dot on a black background in that trigger area. And that's not going to look nearly as good as having a 3D fingertip to paint. 
So now I'm cloning that. I'm gonna, I need to put a fingertip in the other, under the other trigger area as well. I'm gonna rotate my model. Let me rotate my view. And let's just, just fiddle around with this until uh, it looks like it's in the right spot. So again, this this is something, you know, this this quick, I mean, I'm, you, you can put the, these fingertips in, right, in like two minutes. So it's like a two minute change you can make to a model, which once it's painted, it's going to make it look better. You know, it, it is definitely improvement to have fingertips coming through these trigger guards. So I'm pretty happy that with just a little bit of work, I can improve a model. It's It's still, to me, pretty incredible that we can even do this. Okay, so I keep fiddling with this. I want it. I want it to be perfect. So let me look from the other side. Where's his finger? Oh, his finger's actually coming through a little lower on the other side. Let me uh, let me drag that back down toward the front of the trigger guard a little more. Okay, that looks pretty good. And again, that 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 thing is probably like two microns, you know, wide anyway. It's <laughs> you're barely going to be able to see it, except that when you paint it up it is going to look much better to have that fingertip there. Now, he, he's 50 millimeters tall, which that's way too big for me. So I'm shrinking him down. I like the, my, my heroes to be around six and a half feet tall. For me, that's about 40 to 41 millimeters. I'll make him 41. I want this guy to be big, bad ass. I want it to be a little wider, though. So I'm going to unlock the proportions. And I'm just going to make him very slightly wider and thicker. So he looks a little beefier. There you go. So I like that look, a little broader head even, broader shoulders. He just looks tougher to me, more badass. And then I'm basically done with this. So uh, you hit save as. I'm going to save it as an STL, of course. After I have that STL saved up, I'm going to drop that into Chidu Box and start working on the supports. In fact, I'm going to make a support video with this guy so you can see start to finish how I custom modified a figure and exactly how I support that figure uh, to get a perfect print of him out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you liked this video. Please, if you didn't subscribe, subscribe. Please hit like. Uh, I hope you fast forwarded any of the boring parts. And thanks again for watching.